Okay, so it's officially the offseason for the Knicks following the team's second round exit from the NBA playoffs. There's a lot to discuss around the team and how the roster will look in the future. So it's time for a Knicks offseason outlook. I'm going to do it with my guy. He's the founder and the co-host of Knicks Fan TV, CP the franchise. CP, it has been a busy postseason for you. You and I were talking about this. I know it's been busy. How are you doing? Have you got a little bit of a break, a little relaxation since the playoffs ended for the Knicks? Yeah, if, if I break, you mean 24 hours? Yes, yes, and that, that's all I needed, man. It, it was an action-packed, fun-filled postseason decks that just ended in heartbreak, but uh, that's what sports is all about. You know, thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, but nevertheless, the Knicks had an outstanding season, nothing short of it. No doubt about that, and you're right about that with sports. This is why we love sports, and this is why we do what we do. Yeah. But CP, we'll get right into it, okay? This season in the playoffs, Jalen Brunson, he showed that he is a star and the best player on the team. Julius Randle, he looked like a good number two option during the regular season, but not so much in the postseason. In your eyes, should Julius Randle be part of the Knicks roster next season and beyond? Yeah, after another lackluster postseason for Julius Randle, uh, there are many reasons to think yes. When you look at his average, 16-8 and eight in the postseason, 37% from the field, one of the lowest field goal percentages in the postseason. Uh, the turnovers just not making good decisions for this team and then uh three for 14 in the elimination game on the road against the Miami Heat I mean you, you need your stars you need all hands on deck and when Jalen Brunson dropped 41 points Knicks needed a big game from Julius Randle a la game five and they just just didn't get it but a trade for Julius Randle Dexter is is not as easy as it seems in the regular season as you said he was a star an all-star at that and an all NBA player 25 points and 10 rebounds is not something that you can just replace easily and so for for Julius Randle, the Knicks have to make sure that if they are going to trade him, that they get equal to better value in return. You saw what Jalen Brunson did in this playoffs. There is no turning back for the Knicks right now. Making it to the second round of the playoffs, the final eight in the NBA, they're going to need to look to build this team to be better than, than where they left off. And so it's not going to be easy to replace Julius Randle and with his production, 10 rebounds, right? 10 rebounds, that le that helps that Knicks defense be at least passable during the regular season. He contribute, contributed a lot there, both offensively and on the boards, so it's not going to be easy to replace. Yeah, definitely not going to be easy to replace. I know there's been a lot of talk from Knicks fans about that, but it's surely not easy. Let's talk about R.J. Barrett, because he showed yeah. some flashes in the playoffs after a rough first two games against Cleveland. Where are you with Broadway Barrett's development, and do you think he's part of the Knicks' long-term plans? It was an up and down roller coaster regular season for RJ Barrett. Struggled to find his consistency. His defense did slip a bit. But from game three of that Knicks Cavs series, pretty much straight throughout their elimination to the Miami Heat, I was encouraged by the way RJ Barrett played. He shot the ball better. He shot the three better. He was very aggressive in getting to the free throw line. Uh, his defense had improved. I was very encouraged to see R.J. Barrett's defense, and just overall, I thought his decision-making was, was pretty solid. But last year showed that in the Donovan Mitchell sweepstakes, the Knicks were not afraid to trade R.J. Barrett to upgrade in talent. And with, with Jalen Brunson here and the now expectations going up, I still think that R.J. Barrett could be on the table if the right deal comes across the board. I don't see anyone outside of Jalen Brunson being an untouchable going forward. All right, there you go. Now, the Knicks, they did have issues scoring off the bench this season, particularly in the playoffs. How would you like to see the team bolster the bench this offseason? When I look at team needs, I look at two things. Number one, wing depth. I think they can use another a true three and D wing. They'll, those are not hard. To, those are not easy to obtain. Maybe they get back into the draft and they're able to strike lightning in a bottle. There are some lower end free agents that could help in that department defensively and three point shooting. Maybe a Tory Craig who just played for the Phoenix Suns from a three point shooting standpoint. A Georges Niang who's more of a power forward but an excellent three point shooter as well. I also look at some three point shooting guards. Maybe a Seth Curry, a Damian Lee who played for the Phoenix Suns. Uh, Max Schroes, who killed the Knicks in this season, in this series against the Heat, is an unrestricted free agent as well. And one more name that Knicks fans will laugh at, but a was a great three-point shooter this year for the Detroit Pistons. How about the return of Alec Burks? Listen, the Knicks are still going to be over the cap. They will have the taxpayer uh, and the non-taxpayer mid-level exemptions to spend and acquire free agents. These could be some lower-end bargain basement deals that uh, could help the bench scoring. 
I'm not going to laugh at that Alec Burks name uh, drop there. I think that actually could be a pretty good addition to help the bench. Not a bad guy to come back, played well here. Thibs liked him. We'll see how that goes. Now, speaking of the bench, Josh Hart, who was acquired at the deadline, he was a bright spot off the bench for the Knicks. It would appear that bringing him back is a priority for the team, but what do you think is a good number to keep Hart in orange and blue? Hart certainly had some bright spots in the postseason, his rebounding ability, his ability to be a one-man fast break, uh, playing tough, playing physical. He got his feet right in the playoffs for the Knicks this year, although he did struggle shooting as they got into the series with the Miami Heat. He has a player option at worth about $12.9 million. I'd expect him to opt out of that and return to the Knicks on more of a friendly deal. I would say anywhere between $15 to $17 million range. I, I, I certainly expect Josh Hart to return to the Knicks. It seems like he's, he's found a home here. Yeah, that 15 to $17 million number, I think, is one the Knicks would be able to live with. Now, second-year guard Quentin Grimes showed progress this season, and he has potential. What would you like to see the shooting guard do this offseason to work on his game? Continued shooting, ball handling. He was a little sketchy in, in terms of turning the ball over, and just overall just slowing down a little bit more. I've, I felt like when I watched Grimes offensively, he always seemed to be rushing. He was rushing his shots. It almost seemed like he was being chased to some degree. So slow down a little bit, and I think that will come. The old adage is that by year three, Players seem to calm down. Rookies seem to calm down. The game slows down and, and comes to them more naturally. And I think we will see that with Quentin Grimes. One thing's for sure is that his defense was as advertised this year. He had one of the hardest matchups in the league among shooting guards. And you look at some of the guys that he had to face on a nightly basis, he mostly, all, mostly all nights he drew the hardest assignment. So give credit to him there. You just hope offensively he can really pick it up because as a floor spacer operating out there with Jalen Brunson, Quentin Grimes can really make this lineup dangerous if he can become a more consistent three-point shooter. Yeah, all right, we'll watch his development this summer, see what he can come back with next season. Now, a couple other young players, Emmanuel Quickly and Obi Toppin, they are both extension eligible. Do you think New York extends both of these young players or just one of them, CP? No, I think Emmanuel quickly gets extended as early as this offseason for Obi Toppin until the Knicks find some sort of resolution with, with Julius Randle or pick a direction in which they want to go with. I think Obi Toppin plays out his contract, maybe gets traded along this offseason or into the next season, but I don't see Obi Toppin's future here with the New York Knicks as long as Julius Randle is here. So I think quickly gets, gets extended and Toppin either gets traded or, or plays out the contract. All right, CP, here's the money question that people want to talk about this offseason. The Knicks, as you know and I know, they are always going to be linked to trading for a star. They've got 11 first-round picks over the next seven years. Do the Knicks need to add a star to the roster before next season, and what type of star would you like to see play in New York with Jalen Brunson? Before next season, it's hard to say because you just don't know who's going to be available. Last year, while we did see the, the Utah rebuild eventually coming, we didn't know Donovan Mitchell was going to be available as early as he, as he was. And so you have to see how things shake out. We'll see what happens in Game 7 between the Sixers and the Celtics. If the Sixers choke... Does Harden go to Houston? Does Embiid become available? Uh, Giannis with the Bucks Is that relationship starting to fray a little bit? Luka Doncic. So it may not be next offseason that the Knicks are able to acquire that star. But nevertheless, what Jalen Brunson has showed here is that they have one piece. They have a foundational piece to help compete. They finished in the final eight. And so the goal now has to be how do they build on top of that success and bring some help in here for Jalen Brunson so that they can ultimately bring a championship to New York. I'm glad you mentioned that about building upon that success because overall, there seems to be roster stability with this team, as you just mentioned, Jalen Brunson. They've made the playoffs two out of the last three seasons. Do you look at this roster and say that they have the upside to be more than a good regular season team? And what moves do you think the Knicks must make this summer to take the next step towards championship contention? No, I, I think this team with, with Julius Randle is capped. I don't think they're young players. I don't think there's a young player that will emerge a, into a, a multiple all-star, even a superstar. So I, I think they are capped. They're, they're a good team, but they are capped to a certain extent here. And so they must look to acquire a star somehow, some way. And so in the near term, in this offseason, the Knicks need to continue to look to build on top of their weaknesses, a three and D wing, more three point shooting. They need shooters on shooters on shooters. And then as the team improves that way, you hope that your young players improve as well 
with the improvement of the team because your young players need to serve you in, in one of two ways, either helping you to contend or help you to compete in terms of acquiring top end talent. So the goal should be to be continue to look to build until you can strike that grand slam and uh, and, and acquire a top end superstar that can that can truly help uh, make this team a contender. All right, CP preaching for you guys, Knicks fans out there, a little bit of patience in the building as you move towards trying to add another star to this roster. CP, great season by you and a whole Knicks fan TV crew covering the team. I know it's been a lot. I know you guys been doing a lot of work. You know I love the work. I love you coming over here with me. But I'm sure during the offseason we'll talk a lot more about what's going on in the Knicks, man. But I just got to salute to you, brother, for all the work that you've done. So keep up the great work. Thank you. Thanks again, man. It's been a fun ride. And thank you to SNY for having me in, in all these forums, in studio, digital. Uh, I've truly enjoyed working with guys like you, Dexter. So uh, continued success, and let's do it again. Yeah, man. See you soon. Get some rest. Uh, we'll talk some Knicks soon. Thank you, man.